So come on and let me know. <clears throat> should I stay or should I go? Oh, hey everyone, one sec. Didn't see you there. Uh, I'm Alex, thanks for clicking and welcome to this lesson on four ways to use should. Now you are probably familiar with at least two of these ways if you have been studying English for a while. So the most common ways are the first two up here. And then we're gonna look at two other ways that might be a little less familiar to you. So let's start with the first, the very first way that every student learns how to use should when they're studying English, which is for present or future advice. Now the structure for this is should, or should not if you're making a negative sentence plus the base verb. So you have your subject, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, Mark, Paul, my mom, your mom, it's whatever, plus this structure. So let's look at some examples of present or future advice. You should call him. So you're giving the advice to your friend who maybe had a fight with, you know, their boyfriend or their husband or just a friend, and you think they should call him. It's a good idea for them to call him, okay? They shouldn't argue so much. Now, here you're kind of giving your opinion about another couple's relationship, and you're giving your advice to a friend about their situation, if that's not too confusing, I hope. So uh, they shouldn't argue so much. They argue too much. My advice is they shouldn't argue so much. And a third example for you guys, he should apologize. Uh, if you, you know, want to be a good friend to uh, your girlfriend or your boyfriend and you wanna give them, you know, support, and tell them that their boyfriend needs to apologize. You're giving him advice, even though he's not here, he should apologize. It's a good idea for him to apologize to you because he made a mistake, okay? Before we continue, I just want you guys to repeat these sentences after me um, so that, you know, we can practice the pronunciation and you're using the language that you're hearing in this video. So, repeat after me. You should call him. They shouldn't argue so much. He should apologize. All right, let's move on to the second way we use should. Now, here you can use it for past advice or to show past regrets. So the structure for this, just like up here, you have should or should not if it's negative, plus have. It's always have, it's never has, okay? It's always the base form of have, should not have, plus the past participle of your main verb. So let's look at some examples uh, so this is easy to see. First one, <sighs> I shouldn't have done that. So you are showing personal regret for something you did in the past and you feel bad because you really should have made a different decision. So you say, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, now notice here, you know, I put the contraction, uh, we're speaking, I want to give you practical skills, practical language that you can use. I could say he should not have done that uh, and be very formal, but really when most people speak, they speak in contractions. So you and I will speak in contractions in this video too, like a pregnant woman, contractions. It's a joke. Next, you should have asked me first. Now, again, you're talking to a friend and maybe they made a decision and you feel they made the decision without asking you your opinion or if the decision was okay. 
So maybe your friend, um, I don't know, like grabbed your phone and used it to call long distance somewhere. And your phone plan is, you know, almost up. Your data is all used up. Maybe they're, I don't know, watching a YouTube video. If they're watching Ingvid, let them watch like all they want. It's cool. But if they're watching something else, you know, you say, ah, oh, you should have asked me first. This is, again, contraction should have. You should have asked me first. So before we continue, let's repeat these sentences one more time. So repeat after me. I shouldn't have done that. You should have asked me first. Okay, so that's for past advice or past regrets. And here again, if you're using I, usually it's for regret. I should have done something. I shouldn't have done something. Next, expectation. So if you expect something to happen or expect something to have happened in the past, you can use should. Now, this can be used for present expectation, future expectation, and for present and future, the structure is exactly the same as here. And for past expectation, the structure is exactly the same as you see here. So for example, he should be here by now. So you expect him to be at your location now. He should be here by now. Why is he late? My expectation is he should be here by now present expectation, okay? Um, next, she should have been there at seven, okay? So if your friend is telling you, you know, hey, Martha didn't come to the meeting. Um, she didn't come until like eight o'clock. It's like, well, I'm her roommate. I saw her leave the house at like six o'clock. She should have been there by seven, okay? My expectation is, that I expected her to be at the meeting at seven o'clock. She should have been there at seven, okay? Now, depending on the context, you could also use this sentence for past advice, right? So she should have been there at seven, um, but you can also use it to talk about your expectation, all right? And then finally, before finally, let's repeat these sentences just like we've been doing. So repeat after me. He should be here by now. She should have been there at seven. All right, and the final way is to show less certainty, or this is known as hedging. So uh, in cards, I think it's blackjack, if you hedge your bets, um, you're not putting all your bets in one deck of cards, you're splitting. So you, you're leaving the possibility open that more than one you know, way might be possible. So here, if you want to show less certainty, this should work. Okay, so if you have a plan or if you are fixing something or if you, well, yeah, if you're fixing something and you think this, this is supposed to be working, okay, this should work, okay? If you, if you push the power button now, it should be fixed by now. I'm not saying 100% it will work. I think it should be okay, okay? So there's another one, it should be okay. Very common uh, way to show less certainty. Okay, your boss asks you, when is that project gonna be ready? When will you be finished that project? You say, I should have it done by tomorrow. I should, probably. But if it's not, don't get too upset, okay? But I should have it done by tomorrow. And a very, very common thing to say, uh, especially if you work in like the customer service industry and someone asks you, you know, for an exceptional search situation, has, a, has an exceptional request, and you say, it shouldn't be a problem, okay? Maybe I will have some trouble with your request, but it should be okay. 
um, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, this is kind of in line with expectation. It's easy to get them mixed up sometimes, but if you want to show less certainty, if you want to manage the expectations of the people you work for or the people you make a promise to, uh, you can use should in this way. So repeat after me. This should work. I should have it done by tomorrow. It shouldn't be a problem. Beautiful. So just to review, there are four ways that you can use should in English. One, for present or future advice. You should call him. Two, for past advice or past regrets. You shouldn't have done that. Three, for expectation. He should be here by now. And four, to show less certainty or to hedge what you're, you know, promising to someone. This should work, okay? So really by watching these videos, you should be able to improve your English pretty quickly. If you want to test your understanding of the four ways to use should, as always, you can check out the quiz on ingvid.com. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to support what we do at Ingvid, we really appreciate any donation, uh, financial related, that is, uh, that we receive. So you can do that and uh, help us continue doing what we're doing for a long time. Till next time, thanks for clicking. Should I stay or should I go? Do, 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 do.